Okay, guys. Um, just uh, before we start, we have to uh, make a, a conclusion of the whole lab. Conclusion is we will have a, a, the uh, quiz number four. I will post it tonight or by tomorrow. That will cover uh, three covered uh, six and seven. And number four will cover will cover uh, eight and nine. The number five, I want just for the last lab. The last lab is the most difficult lab when it comes to the final exam in the lab and the lecture. The whisper uh, subject is very, very difficult for students. So we'll have a quiz for it. This, the whole quiz, 10 questions or 15 questions or 20 questions just for the whisper, correct? Right? Just for the whisper. So um, you can expect two more quizzes. One quiz uh, coming before the Thanksgiving, and the last one will be after the Thanksgiving activity. Okay, so um, this is quiz four and quiz five. And I put in the assignment some of the, uh, if you look at the assignment, take advantage on those extra credits. You have three extra credits. You can improve your grade if you want to for the midterm or the final exam, just in case something will happen the final exam. The final exam, I did not write it. It's this uh, college-wide final exam for the lab. So uh, let's start um, with this experiment today. So I will lock myself out and we'll start for today's experiment. Let me just stop sharing and then okay, share. So, what we have to do today, we'll have a specific heat experiment. So, this specific heat experiment is, is made of three sections. We'll do three sections this this uh, experiment. Three sections. The first one here, we will have our um, the specific heat of our colorimeter. The colorimeter is just a coffee um, foam uh, cup. Okay, it it does really uh, uh, deliver a very good uh, data. It's not hundred percent. It's not very very accurate like literature value, but very, very close. So this is our calorimeter, called coffee foam cup. This is the lid, it's uh, just a card here, cardboard, cardboard here. And this is your stirrer here, and this is your thermometer. So when you do this, this is your calorimeter here, and this is your Stirrer. You have to make sure that the stirrer can go all the way to the bottom, but you don't touch the thermometer because if you start stirring and touching the thermometer by mistake, the temperature will be what would go up. That will give you a big, large error. So make sure that it's, it's so immersed that it will take inside the solution, but enough distance not to hit the thermometer. So the stirrer here, you need the stirrer here. So you put it this way here, if you look, I'll put it this way, I'll control here, I, you can control it from here. The stirrer can, can touch, the stirrer can touch the bottom of the, of the thermometer, of the cup, but the thermometer should not. We're not uh, 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 um, measuring the temperature of the cup bottom, but we are of the of the liquid inside, correct? So make sure that you don't have the error and make sure that this, this the stirrer when you stir is not touching the thermometer. If it touches the thermometer, then your data will be not correct because the temperature will be going up because you are colliding with the thermometer at the surface. So that would raise the temperature of the thermometer itself. So first we have to do what? We take it off the thermometer. It's not really difficult to do. And you will need, of 
course, I did not tell you what the specific heat. The specific heat is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a matter, one degree Celsius or one degree Kelvin. So amount of the energy needed to raise the temperature of any matter, one gram of any matter, one degree Celsius, correct? And the units of specific, specific heat is calorie per, per gram centigrade Celsius or joules per gram Celsius or joules per gram Kelvin or calories per gram Kelvin. So those are the units here. If you look at this, I can um, highlight those for you here. So you can highlight those um, with the yellow. So those are the units of the, uh, of the specific heat. Amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a matter, any matter, one degree, one degree Celsius or one degree Kelvin, correct? And the heat in general is defined as a mass, here it is, multiplied by specific heat, multiplied by delta T. Delta T is the initial temperature when you put your calorimeter here, Correct? Uh, delta T is the final temperature after you mix uh, the two, uh, the two uh, matters together, the metal on the, the tab wire on side, vice versa, or the cold uh, tab wire with the hot tab wire. So you can mix them. After mixing, you, you will see final temperature will be the, uh, the highest temperature reach by the system after stirring. After stirring, you keep watching the temperature, you go up, 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 and then the highest temperature before it drops back again, that will be your temp yeah, desired temperature, final temperature. The initial temperature is it's not really difficult. You put your liquid in and you put your thermometer and measure what's the temperature at the, the beginning, correct? That's at the beginning, correct? So we'll have to do first the calorimeter specific heat. Second, we have to do a specific heat of a metal. We have a metal shot here. You will weigh about eight grams of those metals or, or less maybe. So three grams maybe. It's in the procedure how much? It doesn't really matter. It does not depend on the, the amount. So you will, you, you will see it yourself. So you will um, measure the uh, specific heat of this metal. And I gave you the metal specific heat. So you have from me the literature value in your in your template, correct? So you will see how good your work is, correct? So the third one here, you will pick only one, not two. We have calcium chloride and we have ammonium chloride. Calcium chloride, ammonium chloride. We'll dissolve them in the in a ionized H2O and we'll measure the heat of solution. Now, as you will see, calcium chloride will dissolve in H2O and will deliver heat, exothermic. So the heat will be negative, and this is calcium chloride all the time. That's a hot pack, called what? Hot pack. So this is ice pack, is ammonium nitrate. If you dissolve ammonium nitrate in, H2, in H2O, you will get an endothermic of the uh, uh, heat of solution. So you don't have to do both. You will pick up one of them here. May I have your attention, please? We'll have two of them. You don't have to do both. You will do just one of them. Let's start with the specific heat of, we know that the general is the specific heat is the mass, uh, the, the, the energy here needed is the mass multiplied by specific heat multiplied by T final minus T initial. So let's go for the procedure for the heat capacity um, of the parameter. That's the first thing you will do. So you will have, have um, volumetric flask 200 mils. I'll bring you some ice in a small beaker. You will put uh, about 250 ml of uh, deionized correct? And then you'll put ice in it, so the temperature will be between four to six uh, degrees here. We are here. So we are here. So 
We are here. So this is your eyes. This is your eyes, H2O. And then you transfer this uh, out of the beaker, the 250 units beaker. Just you need 200. You don't need the 250. And avoid transferring any ice. The ice will give you an error inside measuring the temperature. All right, so you transfer your 200 up to the mark. You take the thermometer and put the thermometer in and measure your what? Your initial temperature. And in another one, take the second one, and this is for your room temperature. So you'll use this one here, 200 ml of temperature. So here it is. This is your 200 of the ice, H2O. Here it is. You look at this. Now you will start doing your room temperature one. You'll have another uh, volumetric flask, and you will uh, make room temperature uh, at the ionized 200 wells. Correct? So the room temperature, uh, you don't have to measure the, this one for the room temperature, but at least you will know this, this room temperature. You can, you can measure it. So you, this is the ice around four to six degrees. This one is the room temperature. Put your thermometer inside, measure the temperature of this. Take your thermometer out, wipe it out, dry it, put it in the room temperature, measure. Those are the initial temperature of both. Correct? You'll come here, the ice, put it inside your, your carburetor cup. Okay? And because this might flip, it's better to put it in a small beaker so it will not flip. Right? And put it in a beaker so it's uh, more rigid. So then you will put your, your lid here. Just double check the temperature again and make sure that the thermometer is not touching thermometer is not touching the, the stirrer, your stirrer here, correct? So now the 200 of yours, room temperature one inside, correct? All of it, and then it starts stirring. Watch the temperature, the temperature will go. I did the opposite here. This it has to be like this, yeah. So so once the temperature, the temperature will go up, 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 and remain constant for a while, and then it will decrease. Once the temperature only goes the highest value before it drops down, correct? That's your, that's your final temperature after what? After mixing. Are you following? Then you plug in your formula. This is the formula. Here it is. This is the formula you will put in, and you will solve in this formula for heat capacity of the of the uh, calorimeter. Correct. So all of those are here. The 200 ml of H2O. That is 200 grams, with the assumption that density of H2O is one gram per ml. Correct. So and then the specific heat of of room temperature here is what is one calorie, as I said here, look at the temperature here, we go up, it's given to you here in this. So if you look at those here, those are the values you need to use, correct? So the specific heat of the ice is 0.209, the specific heat of H2O is 4.18 Joule per gram Celsius, or, or, uh, or one calorie, one calorie is 4.16. So, so here, and this is, don't worry about the specific heat of, of, of uh, H2O, but main thing you have to use those, one for the cold, one for the room temperature. So you plug them in, in the formula here, the mass of the cold is 200 grams, the mass of the room temperature is 200 grams, and you plug all those in the values, initial of the temperature of the room temperature, and then the initial of uh, the, the cold one and the room temperature one, and then the final when you start mixing them, and then you, you mix them, and then you watch the room temperature will go up, 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 and the stair remains 
for a while, for a few seconds maybe, they'll start dropping down. So the highest one would be the temperature you have to record. That would be your T final. So you solve the whole formula here for this one. We are looking for, um, we are looking for this. Heat capacity of the carometer. So this is the first one. When you are done with this, take the thermometer and uh, wipe it out. Rinse it with deionized and wipe it out dry with the tissue. And dump this one here inside the sink. Now we will start doing the second part of the experiment. The second part of the experiment is um, the second part of the experiment is the metal. So we have a metal shots here. Those are aluminum shots. And the heat, uh, specific heat of aluminum shots or, or cylinder or metal or whatever, or solid is 0.89. I gave you the value of this in your template, in your lab report. So now we are starting to do the second part of the experiment. So. I look for you that's uh, a very mo uh, very mo mo modern setup. We'll use vernier like you used with the Pierce uh, log. We don't have uh, enough vernier, so we have only two. So we'll do everything manually with the with our own. So we'll not do this second setup because we don't have vernier uh, uh, probe for everyone. So, and this is a carometer, vernier carometer as well. So we'll not. We'll be using our so we need to, to to measure the specific heat of this aluminum shots. I gave you the answer that what where we, we were expected to be. So how we do this? Well, you have to uh, follow the procedure here. First of all, you will get a test tube, long test tube, correct, and then to put the test tube here in a small beaker. We need to, to uh, measure the test tube empty, not, nothing there. So the, you put the beaker, you tear it. So the t and then you put the test tube empty, you weigh the test tube empty. And the test tube empty will come here. So just record it here. Here it is, guys. The mass of the test tube empty, that's what will be here. That's will be here, this one here. So that's when you measure this one empty here, and you measure it empty. Right? And then you'll put some uh, shots inside, to tell you, um, you'll go up to the procedure, back to the procedure. So you'll put um, two thirds of the metal specific heat. Well, you fill the, the metal to the third, two thirds, I think you will fill the test tube if you have large test tube up to two thirds, not all of it. Maybe around, uh, it will come about eight or 10 grams. You'll see it yourself. Those are very heavy shots. You can see this, those are very heavy. So two thirds of the, maybe more than, uh, than 10 grams. So you fill the test tube and reweigh. When you reweigh the whole thing, you the difference between reweighing, it is, Next, you will measure the test tube with the metal inside it, with the metal shots, correct? So you'll get this one. The difference between those two here, between uh, C and B, will give you the mass of the metal, correct? We'll give you what? The mass of the metal. So we'll give you what? We'll give you the mass of the metal. So go back now, what we have to do? Well, we have to have our Carometers are filled with, with deionized H2O at room temperature, but we have the metal, we have to, the metal uh, at higher temperature. So we'll put them, uh, those metal shots inside the test tube, correct? And we'll put the whole thing on the hot plate. We put a water bath, a beaker with, with tower, and then we'll heat the test tube filled with those shots. So with the assumption then we can measure the temperature of the of the tower, that will be assuming that it will be the same. There's no air bubbles in between. So that will be the temperature of what the initial temperature of the metal. Correct? Right? Are you following me here? So you will take the test tube. 
empty. And then you have your beaker, small beaker, because the test tube will flip to not stay up. You fill it with the metal. So test tube, you put the beaker, tear the beaker, the beaker is zero. Then you put them with the test tube, weigh the test tube empty. Then fill to two thirds of it with the metal shots. Correct? Reweigh. The difference is the, the mass of this metal. You take the test tube, then you put it in a half, uh, in a, uh, not half, but yeah, in, in, in a boiling H2O tab or water bath. So you take a big small beaker, you fill it up to half of it, you put the metal test with inside it, the test tube to boil it. And with the thermometer, come and measure what is the temperature of the metal, initial temperature. Well, we'll assume there's no uh, air bubble or, or that interferes. So we'll say, okay, that's a uh, temperature of the tab or equal to the temperature of the metal shots. So you take the initial temperature. It will be around 80, 90, but it's boiling, correct? So when you are done with this, this one here, you will fill it with, the, with H2O. Let me go up. So you'll fill this one here with H2O with room, at room temperature. So take 400 to 600 meter beaker and fill it and place the beaker into hot plate. That's when you make what? You heat the H2O, the tab or to determine the initial temperature of the metal. Okay, so now you put the test tube filled with the, with the shots inside. That's you, you just keep it there. And then meantime, you can fill your, your place 100 ml of DNS inside the cup, 100 ml at room temperature. You measure the temperature, the initial temperature of the 100 ml, correct? And then when you are, see the temperature is there and the tab bar is enough boiling, measure the temperature and immediately take, take the test tube, Okay, take the test tube and transfer only what from it, the shot, not the test tube itself, the shots inside the tab one. And immediately what? Put your, your uh, thermometer and ready to go. Because as soon as you put the shots, the temperature will go up. You still, Keep stirring, keep stirring until the temperature what? Until the temperature will stop for a while. And this is, there will be the highest. Take, record it, and this will go down. Don't worry about when it goes down. This is your final temperature, correct? So when you are done, we are not allowed to dump any of those shots. Those are very expensive. There is in the back a beaker. Dump just the, the, the DNA's H2O out, and all the shots has to be will be dry there. There's two beakers that has to be dumped inside. Nothing in the sink, those are expensive. So we, we have to recycle them, just put them in the oven and then reuse them. So put them in the oven and reuse them. So this is the temperature there, correct? So now the last one will do heat of solution of one of them. You will not have, you don't have to do both of them. You will not have to do both of them. You do. Ammonium nitrate, endothermic, ice pack, or calcium chloride hot uh, pack. So this is using camping to heat. If you have a tent in camping, use, um, uh, use calcium chloride. If you have an injury, you put ice pack on the injury to, to uh, freeze the flow of blood. So um, to, to, to the injury. To the injury. So it needs a little bit of pain, it needs a little bit of pain. So the last thing here, the, as I said, heat of solution. The heat of solution is, is here. What really you need, you need, after the shots are out, rinse this one with, with, uh, with um, deionized and make yourself ready. So you need to measure one of those here, whether you take this, uh, calcium chloride, exothermic, or ammonium chloride. Weigh eight grams of this, okay, in a boat, weighing boat, correct? So what you will do here, you fill the, the whole mug here with 100 ml. 
you measure the temperature of the ion as 100 mL. That's your initial, correct? After you have measured, you have the, the weighing both eight grams of one of those. You dump the whole thing at once, put the thermometer on the lid and start stirring. And watch the temperature will go up, 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 until it remains uh, constant for, for a couple of few seconds. Record that will be your highest, and then start dropping. Uh, you have to watch for the temperature it goes up, stays for a couple a uh, few seconds, and you start dropping down. So we don't want to record it when it starts drop down. We record it at highest. Correct, guys. So and then you will do all your calculations, and all the formula is here. So this is the heat of the capacity for a, uh, for a calorimeter. This is the heat of the metal, the setup and heat. You, you know what the C of calorimeter for the beginning, you, you made it. And the last one here, the heat of solution is given to you in this. Now, the mass here, you have to watch for this. When you see the mass, this is the mass of both. Mass of 100 ml of H2O plus 8 grams of the whole thing. So you have to watch for the mass, correct? You have to watch mass of the salt, correct? So here, here the um, when it comes to the metal, mass of the metal is different from the mass of H2O. You, you treat those differently. And here, if you look at the mass here, mass of the room temperature, mass of the cold, that's differently. But when it comes to here, this is mass of the, mass of the solution. Correct right? mass of the solution. So you have to um, add all those masses together, which is the eight grams, correct? And then the the, the hundred mass, which hundred grams, so hundred or eight. So let's look here. So here it is. It tells you how to temperature, and it said repeat twelve grams. We'll not do both of them. We'll do one of them. So any, any other questions you have? Any other questions? I think this is very simple. So three sections. The first one is calorimeter uh, specific heat. Second one is the metal specific heat. The third one, heat of solution of one of them, of one of the salt. You like the exothermic or endothermic? Endothermic will be positive. The exothermic will be negative, correct? So let's start and I'll stop recording here. And...